Good morning, one and all. This is Dr. Mervin Paul, Assistant Professor, Department of Photorhinolaryngology, Sri Lakshminarayana Institute of Medical Sciences. So today we'll discuss about the topic foreign bodies in aerodigestive tract. So foreign body uh, is usually something which which is other than from the body's own uh, tissue or something. So it's like something which is coming outside, so come, coming from outside. So usually the common foreign body uh, lodgement places are uh, the nose and the neuropharynx uh, and the larynx, trachea, bronchi. So yes, and there is something else that is the foreign body ear also. So we'll discuss about, we'll discuss only about the foreign body aerodigestive tract. So usually the foreign body is common in children, among ch children uh, who is less than uh, five years. So common in children of two to three years. And it can be accidental or trauma-based foreign body. So the modes of entry of foreign body into the body is usually the anterior nares, the posterior nares during vomiting, coughing or regurgitation and penetrating wounds, wounds in gunshot and palatal perforations in cleft palate. And there's something called the sequestration of bone, so which usually happens in syphilis or irradiation. So a child uh, usually playing with a toy or any uh, kind of a nut or anything. So it usually just tries to put it inside the nose. And sometimes when you warm it, so due to the reflex action, so due, uh, through the coana, the foreign body enters the nasal cavity. And sometimes you yeah, have penetrating wounds. So like uh, when someone is gunshotting, so the bullet gets lodged inside the nose usually. You, not uh, in the nose always in gunshots, but like uh, if the gunshot is made on the nose, yeah, definitely some pellets of the bullet will, which will stay inside the nose. And palatal perforations in uh, cleft palate and sequestration of the bone. So the etiology, so usually it is less than uh, four to five years. Uh, so usually it's the children who is affected commonly. And uh, so these are the uh, nuts. So it's like the beans or the hazelnut or the peanut or the cashew nut, almond. So all these things can be inspired during uh, while the child is playing. And small toys, pins, nails, so all these can also be uh, put in the nose or the nasal pharynx by the child. And in adults, so usually the adult, it's not, so, uh, not always the same adult who will have a foreign body history. So usually, so some adults who are in coma, deep sleep, alcohol intoxication, and some mentally insane adults, so they can put a foreign body their nose. So the most common site is the right nasal cavity in the lower part. So usually it's the right uh, because usually everyone is right handed so they'll tend to put the uh, foreign body in the nose. So the types of foreign body, so there are two types. One is the animate the other one is the inanimate. Animate something which has got some life in it. So animate it's usually the maggot, worms, beetle, insects so all these comes in my in the uh, animate foreign body and inanimate so vegetable foreign bodies such as peas beans and mineral foreign bodies such as metals and plastics and usually post surgically swabs pads and uh, in case of syphilis you will have the bone sequestrum so which can be found as a foreign body so the nature of the foreign bodies, so one is the non-irritating type, the other one is the irritating type. So the non-irritating types are the plastic, glass, and the metallic foreign bodies. So even though they are uh, something which is synthetic and which is made out of, it's human made, so they consider this as a non-irritating type because it does not influence any reaction uh, to the body initially. So it remains symptomless for a longer period of time. So that's why it's called the non-irritating type. So irritating type, which includes the vegetable foreign body. So vegetable, which is something organic. 
so what happens the body tries to uh, start the inflammatory process for an organic form body so the diffuse violent reaction which is caused by the body to the foreign body so there will be congestion and edema of the tracheobronchial mucosa and it's a condition called the vegetal bronchitis so whenever the vegetable foreign body which uh, uh, reaches the bronchus so this condition is called the vegetal bronchitis so uh, so what happens so when the vegetable foreign body stays inside the body cavity so it swells up with time because of the it uh, absorbs all the water from the body from the mucosa where it is in contact with so it swells up with time so uh, due to swelling up so it uh, causes obstruction so usually it's the airway obstruction that it causes and uh, long standing will lead to separation in the lung okay so the uh, so some pictures which uh, shows the foreign body so here you see a x ray skull lateral view which shows the nasal part in the uh, x ray so which shows a foreign body in the nose it's a radio opaque foreign body so whenever you do a x ray to find the foreign body the foreign body has to be a radio opaque object to be seen in the x ray so here you see a a uh, foreign body in the nose uh, mostly on the right nasal cavity it's seen in the right nasal cavity usually you know it will be seen in the floor because that's where the child tends to put the foreign body inside the nose and here you see a picture of a foreign body and here you see it here and here you see a foreign body so the pathology so impacted foreign bodies so what happens so whenever the foreign body is put in, into the nasal cavity or for, for that matter any cavity in the body so it starts the inflammation so the inflammation process starts it started by the body and due to inflammation there is chances of the secondary infection to sit on it and what happens there will be mucopurulent discharge uh, in case of a nasal uh, bleed so there is mucopurulent discharge and uh, there will be nasal bleeding also because usually you know it's not the child tends to put two foreign bodies at the same time in the no uh, nasal cavity it's usually one uh, one side but the rare cases there can be two also so there is nasal bleeding usually it's unilateral and uh, because of the inflammation and the infection so there is granulation and ulceration which is formed uh, in the nasal cavity so do after long standing uh, inflammation in the nasal cavity there can be necrosis of the bone or the cartilage that can occur so when there is a vegetable foreign body it absorbs the water and swells up so which can lead to an inflammatory reaction to the body so if it's a maggots so it's usually bilateral uh, because maggots uh, uh, even though if it's unilateral it just goes through the cavana or the anterior nasal and goes to the opposite side and it can uh, present as a bilateral maggot uh, yeah, infestation so so maggots it's usually seen in bilateral nasal cavities so which uh, the maggot itself which can cause a inflammatory reaction to the mucosa okay then the foreign body some foreign bodies which can be coated with calcium magnesium phosphate and carbonate uh, results in rhinolith so it's like a stone formation so uh, some foreign bodies you know like a piece of a bone which is put in the nasal cavity so that has got some calcium and carbonate so which can uh, present as a rhinolith later in life okay so the clinical features so okay um, so the clinical features so it includes usually uh, it's a unilateral fetid discharge and uh, moving on to the symptoms of the uh, if if it's a case of a foreign body nose 
so it's usually unilateral fetal discharge so the main dictum of a foreign body nose is the uh, unilateral foul smelling nasal discharge in a, a child is usually a foreign body nose so that's the dictum for a foreign body nose so the symptoms which it includes unilateral fetal nasal discharge unilateral nasal obstruction and pain in the nose nasal bleed and excoriation of nasal vestibular skin can happen and in case of an animate foreign body it can be bilateral nasal obstruction uh, so like we saw in the previous slide no we saw maggots so it is usually seen bilaterally so the uh, the symptoms which can happen usually are the headache and some kind of a serosanguinous fetus uh, fetal discharge from the nasal cavity so since there is an obstruction there uh, there is a rhinolalia clausa that is the nasal uh, tone uh, which is increased in the uh, patient so the diagnosis include so how do you diagnose the case of a foreign body no so usually so it's the unilateral purulent nasal discharge in a child must be regarded as a foreign body until proved otherwise so like i said this is the dictum and then when when the patient comes to the doctor so he has to do an examination so local examination so the examination after local decongestion and proper suctioning reveals a foreign body so since there is secretions which is formed around the foreign body so you put some decongestion and suctioning uh, so that you can clearly visualize the foreign body and you can uh, do a x ray to reveal a radio opaque foreign body and dne diagnostic nasal endoscopy so you put a camera inside to see where the foreign body is located and uh, it can be also a uh, therapeutic so you put a scope and through the with the help of the scope with the, and with the probe you can remove the foreign body in a nose okay so the differential diagnosis so the differential diagnosis which includes it uh, people might think is a foreign body but it actually could have been a neoplasm and unilateral sinusitis so sometimes you know a patient says nasal block and everything so there can uh, it it could be a unilateral sinusitis so which is uh, misinterpreted as a foreign body nose and syphilis because of the sequestrum which is formed in the syphilis you can uh, misinterpret as uh, foreign body and unilateral coanal atresia so these are the differential diagnosis that you can misinterpret as foreign body nose so the management includes so if it's an animate foreign body uh, so if there is a maggot or an insect or a beetle uh, so if it's an animate foreign body so the patient has to be isolated so has to be kept away from all the other patients so that he doesn't transfer it to the next patient so patient has to be isolated and then a broad spectrum antibiotic is given prophylactically and uh, some analgesics to uh, reduce the pain and the patient has to be well nourished so iron and vitamin tablets and injection tt is given uh initially before starting the procedure and uh, removal of the ma uh, maggots after chloroform and turpentine application so chloroform and turpentine so usually it brings out the maggot to the surface so that you can berry pluck it so you can uh, pluck the uh, pick the maggots one by one you with the help of a forceps so so maggots are removed by forceps or douching so daily alkaline douching to remove the sequestrum Necro necrotic turbinates to be removed endoscopically so nasal douching is nothing but you no know, putting some nasal normal saline into the nasal cavity uh, to just wash out whatever is there inside the nasal cavity so uh, even after removing the maggots uh, through forceps method so you can also advise the patient for daily alkaline nasal douching to remove if there is any part any um, necrotic part which is present inside the nasal cavity uh, 
and uh, some wound debridement has to be done so which can be done use, uh, usually using a endoscope so inanimate foreign body so inanimate foreign body so you have to take a detailed history from the parents and also the child if the child is responding so detailed history has to be taken so when the child says okay i know i put this i put this vegetable uh, i put this peanut so you know, when the child uh, gives a history so you restrain the child so it's not uh, that all the child all the child is cooperative uh, so the child has to be restrained so the nasal decongestion is instilled so that the nasal mucosa all uh, all the sites so it's visible clearly and suctioning is done to remove all the secretions to visualize the foreign body so once everything is set and uh, the pa patient is uh, all set to remove the uh, foreign body so a curved hook usually or a forceps can be used the uh, used to remove the foreign body so and uh, and once you remove the foreign body you have to re-examine the nasal cavity if there is any remnants which is present inside the nose and also you see the other side of the nose also to check if, uh, if there is any other foreign body in the other nose so usually it's unilateral but in rare cases it could be bilateral also so you re-examine the nasal other nasal cavity as well Okay, so indications for GA. So the previous slide, no, we just saw, we just did it in the OP uh, procedure. So you restrain the child and then you put the forceps or the uh, probe to remove the foreign body. So in other cases, when the child is very uncooperative, uh, so there is an indication for a, or if it's a, a very impacted foreign body, which cannot be taken, uh, in a local anesthetic setup, so uh, so you have to take the patient to the theater under GA. So so the indications for general anesthesia is uncooperative patients, uh, impacted foreign body, and posteriorly placed foreign body. So uh, yeah, usually in the nose, uh, when the foreign body is anteriorly placed, no, you just visualize it uh, clearly and you remove it. But if the foreign body is posterior so you just have to go for a general anesthesia to visualize the nasal cavity completely to remove the foreign body and if it's not visible in anterior rhinoscopy and if it's a radiolucent foreign body you have to go for a uh, general anesthesia and in case of long standing foreign body also so removal of foreign body under general anesthesia so patient uh, is taken to the theater so what do we do now so patient you have to anesthetize the patient okay so then a pharyngeal pack is placed okay and foreign body visualized with a rigid nasal endoscope if foreign body is po positioned posteriorly patient is placed in tonsillectomy pos uh, position foreign body is pushed from anterior nasal into the nasal pharynx and picked out with the forceps so usually uh, uh, if the foreign body is posteriorly placed, you put the patient in rose position, like how you do for a tonsillectomy. So before that, you anesthetize the patient and put a uh, pharyngeal pack so that the pushed foreign body into the pharynx is not uh, uh, does not go into the larynx or the trachea. So for to be careful, so you put a pharyngeal pack in the first place. Then you see the foreign body through the rigid nasal endoscopy through the nasal cavity. When you see it, you push the foreign body into the nasopharynx. And then since the mouth is open in a case of a uh, tonsillectomy uh, position, so you, uh, you take the foreign body through the oropharynx. So you uh, push the tons, uh, foreign body from the nose into the nasopharynx. And from the nasopharynx, it comes down to the oropharynx. And from the oropharynx, you uh, uh, pick the foreign body through the oral cavity. Rhinolith. Rhinolith is something like a lith. It's like a stone which is formed uh, usually by a calcium or a carbonate comp uh, foreign body which is present in the 
nasal cavity. So removal of impacted rhinolith is done under GA. Preferable to break the rhinolith into pieces. So it's like a stone I told you. So you break it into small, small pieces and take the foreign body out. So it's usually called the piecemeal uh, procedure. So if it's a case of a button battery, it's a surgical emergency and needs to be removed within two hours. So button battery is one of the uh, major emergency because the button batteries have some chemicals, zinc, mercury. Uh, so all these chemicals are there, which is present inside. So it starts leaking. And it, uh, when it uh, comes in contact with the nasal mucosa, it is going to cause some uh, heavy reactionary changes. So button battery um, is a foreign body is an emergency and has to be removed within two hours so that the leak does not happen. Okay, so this is about the foreign body nose and the nasopharynx. So, uh, so this is basically about the airway, right? So nose and nasopharynx is the initial uh, point of contact for an airway. So then comes the larynx and the trachea. So foreign body, larynx and the trachea. So what are the symptoms that the patient can have, a uh, patient of a larynx and a trachea foreign body can have? So usually it's difficulty in breathing. So since it's an airway, uh, so since the lungs is pushing out the uh, air from the uh, uh, bronchi to the trachea and to the larynx and the vice versa happens. So difficulty in breathing happens and there is hoarseness or weak voice if the foreign body is present in the larynx. So since vocal cords are there, so there is change in voice and choking, choking and coughing, which is a, a preventive reflex of the body and respiratory distress due to complete obstruction and inability to speak. And there is something called strider, which can happen and wheeze. Uh, which is unilateral. So the clinical features. So, yeah, so initial, so there are basically three stages. Uh, one is the initial period of choking, gagging and wheezing. Next comes the symptomless interval and later comes the symptom. So initially, so the period of choking, gagging and wheezing lasts for a short time foreign body may be coughed out or it may lodge in the larynx or further down in the tracheobronchial tree. So initially uh, there is choking. So when the foreign body goes, so the patient starts choking and gagging. So it usually lasts for some time. So because of the uh, cho choking thing, so the patient starts coughing it out. So the foreign body might come out or because of the vigorous behavior of the patient. So the patient, uh, foreign body can get inside further. So, uh, so yeah, so the next stage comes the symptomless interval. So respiratory mucosa adapts to the foreign body. So in it, initial symptoms disappear and few hours, uh, it, this symptomless interval usually lasts for few hours to few weeks. So uh, sometimes the foreign body does not cause any trouble to the uh, mucosa of the respiratory mucosa. So it can go up to weeks uh, that the foreign body goes unnoticed. And later, so the later the symptom comes. So once uh, the respiratory mucosa, it was adapted before, and then once it starts getting irritated, so the later the symptom comes. So you, it's usually the airway obstruction because the mucosa gets edematous and inflamed. So there is airway obstruction, inflammation or trauma induced by the foreign body depends on the site of lodgement. So these are the three stages. So whenever there is a foreign body uh, in the airway, larynx or trachea or the bronchi. So these are the three stages. So initial period of choking and gagging, symptomless interval and later comes the symptoms. Okay. The other things, so yeah. So site of the foreign body lodgement. So if the larynx, so you have the larynx above, then the trachea, then comes the bronchus. So when the foreign body uh, uh, is lodged in the larynx, 
so there is complete obstruction so that can even lead to death so if there is a partial obstruction so the patient will present as strider or hoarseness of voice or cough or respiratory difficulty so since it's a common so if uh, uh, say for example so that is the main uh, line for the airway to enter into the lungs so if it is completely obstructed in the larynx so it can lead to death and then comes the trachea so followed by the larynx so it continues as a trachea below so if there is an obstruction so it can lead to choking strider wheeze cough palpatory thud or audible slap so palpatory thud is nothing but when the foreign body moves uh, from the carina uh, where, where the bifurcation occurs so from the carina to the low vocal cord above so during inspiration expiration it moves up and down so that's called the palpatory thud or audible slap so usually when the foreign body reaches the trachea it it can go to either of the bronchi depending on the size basically so otherwise uh, in trachea also there can be a, a complete obstruction that can occur which can lead to death okay so but in bronchus it's not this scenario so it the foreign body can lead to uh, either of the bronchus so it uh, usually it's the right bronchus they say and uh, so what are the symptoms that the patient will present with if uh, if the foreign body reaches the bronchi so it's usually the cough wheeze and diminished air entry so that forms a triad so it's a triad so basically if there is a foreign body in the bronchi you have a triad which is called the cough wheeze and the diminished air entry to the affected lung and then comes the respiratory distress with swelling of the foreign body and uh, there can be lung collapse because there is no air entry to that particular uh, lung so there is lung collapse emphysema pneumonitis bronchiectasis or lung abscess are late features so these are the uh, site of foreign body lodgement and its complication okay so this is um, about the foreign body bronchi so if the size of the foreign body is small so there uh, when the patient during inspiration air can go inside and uh, during expiration air can come outside so there is no change in the size of the lung okay so here uh, what happens so when the patient uh, inspires air goes inside it's like a ball and wall uh, kind of a foreign body so when the patient inspires uh, air goes inside when he tries to expire there is no air uh, going outside so what happens there is emphysema so there is enlargement of the lung uh, so there is complete obstruction while expiring so inspiring air is getting in expiring air is not going out so the lung is filled with air so that leads to emphysema and uh, here the third scenario is complete obstruction of the bronchus so there is no air going inside no air coming outside so there is so this is the usual size of the lung but now it has collapsed so leading to atelectasis due to obstruction so it's called the obstructive atelectasis okay so there is uh, the fourth scenario is the d scenario it's the same as uh, not same it's somewhat similar to b so that is air cannot go inside but air can come outside so that will lead to atelectasis as well so air can uh, go only out but cannot enter inside the lung okay so this is a picture which showing a uh, foreign body in the larynx so can you see uh, it's the vocal cords here below you see the trachea so it is uh, it is lodged supraglottically so above the vocal cords it's lodged so here you see a foreign body uh, usually it looks like a coin okay in the airway okay first examining the patient so 
okay so examination so first few hours of aspiration so that leads to changes in air flow so initially when the patient aspirates the foreign body so when you try to auscultate the trachea as well as the larynx uh, lungs both the lungs so there is changes in air flow audible click uh, which is present so like i said when the foreign body moves up and down so there is something called the audible click which is heard and fluttering noise due to oscillation of the foreign body in the trachea or the bronchi so uh, here uh, you see the foreign body is not completely obstructing the bronchi so it's of a smaller size so uh, what happens uh, when you inspire and expire you will have a fluttering noise so unilateral expiratory wheeze and reduced air entry so there is foreign body in the bronchus so uh, when you auscultate only one uh, one sided so one side you hear a expiratory wheeze and reduced air entry to that particular uh, lung there is a foreign body bronchus and vegetable foreign body so which swells up causing inflammatory reaction and atelectasis so inflammatory so like i said so it causes complete obstruction so when the vegetable when there is a vegetable foreign body it uh, absorbs all the water and swells up and causes complete obstruction uh, because of the inflammatory reaction and thus leading to atelectasis of the particular lung and mediastinum shifted to the same site okay and compensatory emphysema of the opposite lung so one lung goes for atelectasis the job is taken up by the other lung so there is compensatory emphysema so mediastinum is shifted to same side since there is a uh, atelectasis on one side the mediastinum completely is pushed to the uh, same side and dull uh, breath sounds on percussion so when you try to percuss so the uh, it's not resonant it's dull so what are the investigations that you uh, need to do so first thing uh, basically is the x ray neck so usually it's the ap and the lateral view with the neck neck extended and next comes the x ray chest so the foreign body can be in the larynx level or it can uh, it could have gone to the bronchus level so you do a x ray neck as well as x ray chest so x ray chest it's the pa view and lateral both in expiration and inspiration so x ray neck ap and lateral view x ray chest pa and lateral view both in inspiration and expiration and ct if not visualized by x rays so when you don't see the foreign body in the x ray neck or chest go for a uh, ct okay now the site of foreign body so like i said earlier so bronchus in the bronchus basically it's the right main bronchus which is commonly affected with the foreign body because it is wider than the left bronchus so it is wider so that the foreign body can pass easily into the right bronchus and it's almost in straight line with the trachea so it's uh, straight straightly aligned with the trachea so that the foreign body just directly goes into the right bronchus and if there is an interbronchial septum so the foreign body can le uh, go into the left bronchus effect of inspiratory air current to the right and uh, the other sites of foreign body uh, are the trachea like i said uh, earlier it's the trachea and it can be the larynx so objects with irregular edges and subglottic region okay so the management so what is the management of a foreign body obstruction so airway obstruction so uh, usually management is to somehow remove the foreign body from the body so initial first aid that can be given at home like uh, when 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 you uh, when the patient's family or uh, friends uh they find the patient choking gagging so they find something is wrong with the uh, patient uh, he's uh, trying to gasp uh, his life for breath so so these are the things that the uh, 
that can be given as a first egg basically so it's usually the back blows so pat on the back vigorously so that some amount of air which is uh, uh, which gives a pressure in the uh, airway tube so that can uh, expel the foreign body out so back blows and chest thrusts can be done and in a case of a responsive child so it's usually the in a children in an infant you can do this back blow so you can place the children uh, infant in the hand you give back uh, blows and uh, turn the baby in supine position and can give chest thrust okay so that's in that way you you can uh, push the foreign body out of the airway and in a case of a responsive child you can do a heimlich maneuver so yes so these are the, this is the heimlich maneuver so you stand behind the patient uh, not only the child usually for adults stand behind the patient and at the level of the zippy sternum so you hold the patient very tightly so like uh, this so you stand behind at the level of the zippy sternum you hold very tightly and just give thrust so you just compress the zippy sternum uh give a give two to three thrust so what happens the residual uh, volume of air which is present inside the lung is pushed about is uh, pushed through the bronchus then to the through the trachea and then the larynx so if there is any obstruction in this pathway definitely it can push it, uh, it pushes the uh, the air is pushed from the lung into the path uh, into the bronchus or the trachea or the larynx so which in turn pushes the foreign body out so you repeat this uh, uh, procedure until the choking uh, object comes loose and comes out so sometimes what happens this can even uh, go worsen so sometimes the foreign body which is present in the larynx after doing this procedure can go into the uh, trachea or the bronchus so it is a double edged sword so it's like you do it it's giving a try it's not like you should not do it you have to do it uh, but uh, it came uh, it helps in most of the cases but in other cases sometimes it it can worsen up also so this is for the babies place the uh, baby in a prone position on your hand and apply five back thrusts between the shoulder blades with one hand now turn over the baby still supporting with the neck and arm apply five chest thrust using the second and third finger compress about 1 cm deep 1 inch or 1 cm deep so uh, so that uh, this is also the same like the uh, previous thing so the residual air you are pushing it out through the uh, air passage so which in turn can expulse the foreign body out okay so you tried uh removing the foreign body at home but it's no it failed it can uh, it fail and you cannot remove the foreign body so take the patient directly to the hospital so what are the things that can be done in the hospital so usually it's the direct laryngoscopy so they call it the dl scopy so you give an anesthesia to the patient and you using the dl scopy go see the larynx to uh, visualize the foreign body and remove it directly otherwise if the uh, foreign body has gone much deeper so you go for a bronchoscopy so it's uh, if the foreign body is present in the trachea or the bronchus you do a bronchoscopy so bronchoscopy selection of sizes of the bronchoscope uh, for more than 6 years it's age in years plus 3.5 divided by 3 if it's less than 6 years age in years plus 4.5 divided by 4 so that's how you select the diameter of the bronchus uh, for that particular patient so other instruments uh, it's usually the uh, negus bronchoscope chevalier jackson bronchoscope chevalier jackson grasping forceps cleff arrow smith safety pin closing forceps so these are the other instruments which can be used to remove the foreign body so yes the methods like i said it's the conventional 
rigid bronchoscope okay so you see it's a uh, you see through the naked eye and you uh, remove the foreign body and here rigid bronchoscopic with telescopic aid so it's with the help of a camera here you don't have a camera here you have camera and bronchoscopy with c arm fluoroscopy so with the help of an c arm x ray instrument so you remove the foreign body and this is called the dormia basket so this is like a basket kind of thing so which holds the uh, foreign body inside and which helps in uh, removing the foreign body and forget this balloon catheter that can be used to remove the foreign body and tracheostomy so in a case of a uh, supraglottic uh, or laryngeal foreign body which is completely obstructing the airway so you bypass the airway with a tracheostomy and last uh, case where you cannot remove the foreign body with all these me methods go for a thoracotomy okay so uh, we uh, finished the foreign body airway so now moving on to the foreign body digestive path so that's the esophagus so etiology which includes uh, it's most commonly uh, in children uh, like we already discussed adults and psychiatric patients so adults usually in adults it's the, basically the psychiatric patients who are involved and adults yes so someone who eat uh, chicken bones uh, mutton bone fish all these can uh, get lodged in the foreign body esophagus so it, um, so in children why the, the foreign body esophagus occurs so basically it's the lack of molar teeth eating uh, non food substances like toys or uh, uh, stones all these things the children tend to put in inside their mouth and immature coordination of swallowing inadequate supervision and usually it's the male child uh, which comes with the uh, history of foreign body so usually it's the male child so these are the causes uh, for a children to have a foreign body uh, esophagus so in adults so why in adults uh, do you get a foreign body esophagus it's usually accidental food swallowed hurriedly and under the influence of alcohol and if there is any esophageal stricture the foreign body gets uh, lodged proximal to the stricture so these are the causes for a foreign body esophagus okay the types of foreign body so it's radio opaque or radio lucent so if it's a radio opaque it could be a sharp uh, foreign body otherwise blunt foreign body is so sharp which includes pins dentures fish or chicken bone and blunt it could be coin or battery so the same way for the radio lucent uh, foreign body which is sharp or blunt so the most common foreign body in children is the coin the most for common foreign body in adults is the fish or meat bones the most common level is the trichopharyngeus junction so the site of foreign body impaction in the esophagus so mainly there are four constrictions in the esophagus so that's where the foreign body of the esophagus get uh, lodged in so first is the upper esophageal sphincter or the trichopharyngeus junction and second is the aortic arch uh, so where you have a constriction and the third is the left main bronchus so which makes an impression in the esophagus and um, uh, ha, the esophagus has a constriction there and the fourth is the lowermost uh, part which is the gastroesophageal junction okay so <clears throat> so for sh uh, sharp objects so yes so these are the organs so uh, which is bigger in size uh, gets lodged at the four constrictions so for sharp objects it can proximally get lodged somewhere in the oral cavity or the oropharynx uh, so yeah so basically where are the places that the sharp objects can get lodged in are the tonsillar cribs and base of the tongue 
Valicula or the pyriform fossa. So these are the uh, four uh, regions for the sharp objects to get large stem. Okay. So yes. Uh, <clears throat> so here uh, you see a foreign body in the esophagus at the lower end, and here it's a barium swallow which is done. So which is uh, covering the foreign body. And uh, next, you do the. Uh, this is called the UGI scopy, upper uh, GI scopy, where you see the foreign body. Here you see a toothbrush. So the symptoms which include uh, discomfort in the throat and uh, pain, dysphagia, orinophagia, drooling of saliva, coughing strider if it compresses the posterior wall of the trachea and chest or epigastric pain so these are the symptoms that the patient will come with yeah definitely when the when there is a foreign body which is stuck in the esophagus um, so pain will be there difficulty will swallowing will be there painful swallowing will be there since the patient cannot uh, swallow his own saliva so there is regurgitation of the saliva. So that's why the patient will have a dro uh, drooling uh, of saliva, coughing. If the if the foreign body uh, is impinging on the posterior wall of the trachea, they can have uh, have coughing because it's a protective reflex, along with strider also. And the signs. So what are the signs that the doctor can see in the patient is pulling of saliva in the pyriform fossa. Since the patient cannot swallow his own saliva only, so with an indirect laryngoscopy, the patient, uh, uh, the doctor can see some pooling of saliva in the pyriform fossa, and laryngeal cre crepitus may be absent. Broca's sign is absent. So, what are the investigations that we do for a patient with a foreign body esophagus? So, the first and foremost thing is the plain X-ray. Uh, lateral and AP view. So if it's a radio opaque foreign body, the site of uh, the, it can be seen with the plain X-ray and the site of the foreign body is visualized and widening of the post cricoid space can be seen, persistent air bubbles in the esophagus. So these are the things that you can see in the uh, X-ray, uh, plain X-ray, lateral and AP view. And then you take a chest X-ray uh, PA and lateral views. Uh, why sometimes the foreign body can uh, could have gone into the lungs also. So in order to uh, be on the safer side, you do a chest X-ray, PA and lateral views or also. And then you go for a barium swallow. It's for the radiolucent and fine foreign bodies. And CT scan in case of negative radiography. So when there is a uh, when the barium swallow and plain x-rays does not show you anything, go for a CT scan. So there are some high risk situations uh, if the foreign body is present. So what are the high risk situations, which is an emergency. So when there is a sharp object, so it's an emergency, it has to be picked up uh, immediately and batteries. So batteries, because it leaks, uh, the chemical substances, so it has to be highly considered. Narcotic packs in case of drug trafficking, so the, there is chances of narcotic pack leakage and the patient can go for uh, death, so respiratory uh, failure, which can even go for death. And objects more than 24 hours can form fistula structure or large foreign body. Um, Okay, the treatment. So basically the treatment uh, is observation in case of asymptomatic cases or you go do a esophagoscopy. So when the patient is symptomless, you observe for some time and uh, if you want to confirm it, go for a esophagoscopy. And um, fishbone, uh, like I said, sharp instrument, uh, sharp foreign bodies, which is usually present in the tonsillar cleft. Uh, base of the tongue, valicula, and the pyriform fossa. So it, that can be easily removed in the OPD itself with the help of a 
10% ligno cane spray, which is sprayed in the posterior pharyngeal wall and using the video laryngoscopy or an ideal mirror, you can easily remove the uh, foreign body of a fish, fish bone. And non-impacted foreign body, you can use a flexible esophagoscopy using a balloon catheter. And the patient has to be nil per oral uh, until otherwise said by the doctor and IV antibiotics has to be given prophylactically, analgesics has to be given. Foreign body uh, removed under uh, general anesthesia are usually hypopharyngoscopy, esophagoscopy and bronchoscopy. So for all these things, definitely yes, uh, general anesthesia is needed. So removal of the foreign body with e esophagoscopy. So the identified, so esophagoscopy, so like we said, if uh, you can use a flexible esophagoscopy if the foreign body is not impacted, but rigid esophagoscopy is needed if the foreign body is an impacted one. So identified the, in, uh, identify the impacted foreign body for symptomatic patients, uh, you have to do a esophagoscopy and for suspected radiolucent objects, you have to go for a esophagoscopy to remove the foreign body. And for sharp, sharp pointed objects like uh, dentures or pins or safety pin, uh, nails, etc. So you have to go for a esophagoscopy to remove the foreign body. And batteries uh, and coins. So usually the coins will be present in the upper one third of the esophagus. But if the duration crosses more than uh, 24 hours, it is seen in the lower two-third of the esophagus. And failure of removal of uh, foreign body via the esophagoscope, lateral pharyngotomy or thoracotomy is done. So the last resort is thoracotomy or pharyngotomy. <coughs> Thank you.